Assembling a panel shade using 24 gauge copper wire instead of that aggravating masking painters or electrical tape. One of the things that you'll notice here is that I am working on a piece of plate glass. I have various reasons for that and also you notice I haven't soldered the back side of the panel and that's so it can slide on the glass and when you solder the wire on like I'm going to show you okay it's all at one level you don't have it jacked up in the back by a bead on the back now it's a little tricky getting started you know I've got a tail okay so I can solder in between my fingers because you want the copper you want the copper wire to be uh, flat against the glass and on the very back top edge of the panel see so people accuse me of having Teflon fingers but the idea is if you don't touch your finger with the iron you won't burn yourself so you see, I'm tacking the wire across the top, just up to where the two panels will meet. Now, if you have trouble, okay, if you have trouble controlling the amount of solder that you put on uh, the, the top of the panel, you can always put a paper spacer in between the pieces, okay, at the seam, so that you don't solder across that gap. You don't want to solder across the gap. There's a reason for that. Okay, and I'll be showing you the reason for that farther along uh, when we get everything done. But it is very important that you don't solder across that gap. You see? You see how I'm doing that? Holding the wire down. You know, adding just a little tad, just a couple of spots of solder on that top. See, so this is a four panel, okay, and hopefully I'll be able to show you the spacer in a minute. You see, I put, that's just paper, that's just a thin piece of paper in between the seams. It's tricky to put on there, I know, but if you're having trouble controlling the flow of your solder, you need to do that. The, the paper will stop it from, from bridging the gap across the two panels because you're going to want to be able to bend that wire when we pick it up to put everything together. See? Very, very simple. Very, very simple. And uh, I know this is a long-winded this is a long-winded video and demonstration but that's what I'm doing. I'm holding the wire down against the glass. See? I can solder up to that paper and the solder's not going to go over the paper. It's not going to cross that gap. If you if you need to do that, I've gotten pretty good at being able to uh, estimate, you know, how much solder I'm going to be putting on there, how much solder I'm picking up with my uh, the tip of my iron. Okay, and also I have the little screwdriver that helps to get it into the corners. Now with some size panels, it could be it could be kind of awkward. But I've come across and figured out how to do this uh, after trying multiple times to use the masking tape, the electrical tape, uh, and having it extremely frustrating, extremely aggravating. You know, plus one of the things that a lot of people don't seem to quite realize is that in order to use the tape, uh, masking tape, electrical tape, whatever. You've got to clean the crap out of your panels. So they've got to be clean enough to eat off of, okay, for the tape to stick. All right, well, and the way I'm doing it here, you know, I leave the cleaning as almost the last step because I'm, I'm basically I use a, a water-soluble flux. So, you know, I can spray the panels down, whatever work I'm, whatever I'm working on, I can spray it with water and wipe it off. But, you know, and because I'm using the wire for my assembly process, okay, I don't need to clean the panels to where it's absolutely clean enough to eat off of, okay? I hope you can kind of understand that because, you know, when you're using the tape, you don't realize, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't realize, you don't know if you had got it clean enough until you pick the panels up to put it together and the tape lets go and the panel falls in and then you wind up, you know, then you wind up... <laughs> cussing your brains out or having to fix whatever is broken uh huh, or it rips the copper foil off so now we do the same thing to the bottom ok 
okay? We do the exact same thing to the bottom with the wire, okay? It's very important that the wire is flat against the glass and on the bottom of the copper foil edge, okay? Now, once you get that tacked on the corner or at the seam, it's okay to let it wander uh, as you go across the bottom uh, a little bit. It doesn't have to be flat on the bottom of the copper foil. Uh, it can actually wander up and be centered because, you know, when I get all this put together, it's going to be uh, the foundation for my bead anyway. Okay, but it is super, super important that it's flat against the glass, flat against that bottom edge of the copper foil panel at the seam. Like I say, it can wander up a little bit, but it has to be flat at the bottom. And, you know, one of the other reasons that I'm doing this on top of plate glass besides, you know, I can slide the panel around and I'm not knocking the copper foil off the back, okay, by doing that on a rough table or uh, other some other kind of board or waffle board or whatever, is that while I'm putting flux on here, the flux isn't going to be absorbed into the table okay and as I'm tacking things in place with the iron okay uh, I'm not picking up uh, whatever kind of crud is in the table I'm not picking dirt up okay from the table I'm not burning the table you know I'm not picking up sap or God knows what you know some other people work on okay so as you can see and I use a little screwdriver to help push it in now some folks are asking, well, why don't you use a, a thicker wire? Well, the first few times I tried to do this, I used, I tried 18 gauge. And it was so stiff that when I picked up the panels to uh, fold it, it just ripped the, foil, the copper foil off the edge of the glass. You know, just ripped it right off. Then I had to re-copper foil and start over again. You know, so it was very aggravating to do that. And, you know, one of the things that a lot of folks don't seem to understand is that, you know, the thicker the wire, okay, the thicker the wire, the more heat it takes to get it to solder and tack to. So, and it conducts heat. That's why they use copper on the bottom of pots and pans and things, okay, because it helps to conduct heat. Well, I'm holding that with my fingers, all right? So 18 gauge gets hot real quick to the point to where I'd be burning my fingers trying to hold it. Now you see how I've got it flat on the glass, bend it around the seam, use the, uh, yeah, I can use a, okay, and you see where I did not solder across the seam, okay? That's the really crucial part is to not solder across that seam. Now I have to turn it around and do the bottom of the other three panels, as you can see, all right? And I know this is long-winded, but this is part of the process, so you know, when I get all that done, then I can go on to uh, the second step. Okay, so, see? And it's also, you know, as you notice how nice and straight my lines are, it's because, you know, I have a cutting pattern and I have a grinding pattern working on top of a cartoon, okay, and using a ruler, not trusting my eyes, you know, because it can look straight and look smooth and look even, but that doesn't mean that it is. There's a big difference between it looking and it being. So, you know, when you're doing a panel lamp of any kind, it's, it is important that you use, like, because I have all those multiple separate pieces in there, it's very important, you know, to get the sides straight. So when you have the seam, okay, you're not having to use a heck of a lot of solder in there to cover the seam and on the inside. So this is, this is a different approach than what a lot of people have been taught or have seen or have, uh, you know, or have done. Uh, but I found out that this really works the best way for me. And it's, I've been using this for over 40 years. Uh, the advantage now is that I'm able to make these little videos and post them online to try to pass this along to other people. You know, uh, hopefully I could kind of feel like maybe I've done some good in the world by being able to pass this along. 
because everybody really needs to know this instead of trying to use, you know, tape, masking tape, electrical tape, uh, taping string to it and picking it up that way, you know. Uh, and a lot of times, because a lot of times I'm alone in my studio, so I have to figure it out how to be able to do stuff by myself without, I don't have an extra pair of hands. You know, I don't have somebody that could go, oh, this will work, you know, I need you to hold this here, and they don't know why they're holding, and you know, you tell somebody to hold something and they, they just barely touch it, and you, you apply some pressure, and then the thing pulls itself apart, rips itself apart, you know. I mean, it's just, uh, have to tailor my procedures to my environment. So, thank you. Tune in for step two.